<laughs> I love these types of videos. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I had too much coffee today. <sighs> okay, Kara. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful. <sighs> I need some water. Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. It's Kara. I am a queer YouTuber here on the tube, and my pronouns are they, she. Okay, let's get into the video. Gotta say my pronouns. I made a video a while back called Reacting to Your Gayest Confessions, and that was one of my favorite videos I've ever made, and it was also like the most fun. I'm so grateful that you feel safe enough to share these with me. So yeah, I'm gonna be reacting to your queer confessions again today. You sent me these through DM on Instagram and I haven't really read any of them yet. So I'm kind of just gonna be picking them as I go so that you can get my most authentic reaction. All of these will be anonymous, duh. The first one to kick it off. <clears throat> When I'm having sex with my boyfriend, sometimes I accidentally go to squeeze titties. <laughs> to add on to that, I've identified as bisexual for years now, but I'm worried that I may be, in fact, a lesbian. That might be your indication, sweetie. My boyfriend is genuinely the only man I'm attracted to and I love him with all my heart, but I'm worried that what I'm experiencing may be calm pet. Calm pet, calm. Whenever I read com pet, I read it as like comfit. How do you even say that? It stands for com com compulsory heterosexuality. So there's a lot to unpack here. You can still identify as, as bisexual and have only, you know, experienced being attracted to men like once. You are attracted to a man, obviously, your boyfriend. Therefore, you can still identify as bisexual. However, there's a difference between sexual attraction and romantic attraction. You can be very romantically attracted to your boyfriend, but in terms of in the bedroom, you wish that you were having sex with a girl. Let me tell you, I relate to this wholeheartedly because my last boyfriend, I, I really genuinely think I loved him romantically. You know, I still got all the butterflies and I wanted to kiss him and I wanted to go on dates with him. But when it came to sex, I didn't want any of it. I didn't want any of it. This could be the case with you. I don't know for sure. It definitely could be compulsory heterosexuality because Growing up, you know, straight is the default. And like, that's what we're all taught. I mean, you can still squeeze his titties, but they're just his man titties. <laughs> I feel like as long as you're still sexually attracted to him and romantically attracted to him, and like he's on the same page, I don't think you need to worry. But if you genuinely aren't sexually attracted to him, then maybe you might need to worry because then he's gonna be, you know, needing things from you or like wanting things from you that you aren't able to give to him and then it's not fair to both of you. So I would do some deep digging in your head. Next confession. My queer confession is that when I was 11, I had a lead role in a school show and my mom said that I was a thespian but little me, not knowing what a thespian was, said, I'm not a lesbian, I have a crush on a boy. Fast forward to now, I'm 14 and bisexual. <laughs> okay, wait, first of all, I have to look up thespian. I don't actually think that's a word, but thespian is. Oh. Thespian is a fancy word for an actor. Wait, how am I an actor and I don't even know what this means? I feel like as children, we all in the back of our mind just knew that we were queer. And we would always try to defend ourselves if there was ever a moment when our straightness was questioned. Like when I was younger, I remember um, a car ride with my mom. We were in the mall parking lot or something and I all of a sudden started crying. And she was like, Kira, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? And I was like, mommy. I really don't want to be a lesbian. And my mom is like, don't be silly, Kira. You're not a lesbian. Don't worry. And then I ended up being queer. Um, that's a very common thing for young queers to do. I love that and I'm so proud of you for just existing. <laughs> Next confession. I got matched with the most gorgeous girl on Tinder and we hadn't really talked yet, but of course I already had to tell my friends about it on TikTok. But there was one thing I forgot, the power on gay TikTok. 
Oof, let me tell you, there is a lot. It didn't even take 24 hours for said girl to see my video and comment on it. Trust me when I say I've never been more embarrassed and I'll never underestimate the power of gay TikTok again. Sweetie. <laughs> Mistake number one, <laughs> don't talk about her online. Even though I feel like that's such a thing that YouTubers do. The person that's not a TikToker or YouTuber is like, why are you announcing this to the world? Yo, when gay TikTok gets a hold of shit, they run with it. They sprint with it. They get on a jet plane and fucking skirt with it. Me and Lauren had a TikTok over like the, the beginning of the pandemic just because we were really bored. We didn't even do anything very significant on there. Like we didn't make groundbreaking TikToks. We just existed as our gay selves on TikTok. And let me tell you, I have no idea why we got 100,000 followers in like two weeks, but we did because we were gay on TikTok. TikTok is a powerful platform, so you better be careful what you put on it. I do have my qualms about TikTok, but <laughs> this is not the time. <laughs> I fell in love with my step granddad's new wife's daughter. Okay, wait, step grand. So your divorced grandma's new husband, but now ex husband, because now he has a new wife and her daughter. Okay, I feel like that's pretty far removed. I don't know. Here's the thing it's like, even if someone isn't like blood related to you and they're a part of your family, it's still considered family to me. But you know, at the same time, I guess you can't help who you fall in love with. I feel like I would never, I would never be able to emotionally get there to the point of like falling in love with someone that's a part of my family. And like someone that I see in my house and like someone that hangs around, I don't know. Ooh, this one's spicy. Okay, next confession. We both orgasmed at the same time while I was in the passenger seat and she was in the driver's seat. Don't worry, the car drove itself. <laughs> There's been so many times when I wanted to do that, but I didn't want to risk my safety and the safety of my partner. But that is just magical. I feel like car sex is like on another level. I feel like you guys vibe with car sex too. Comment below if like you like car sex. But <laughs> first of all, I'm a little bit worried because it's a little bit dangerous, but I'm glad you're okay. And second of all, good for you, get it. Um, also, isn't it amazing when like you come at the same time as your partner? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Next confession, my niece found my vibrating butt plug. I told her it was an alien laser. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, this reminds me of when I used to find my mom's tampons in her room and I used to think they were like toys, so I used to play with them and my mom was like, Kira, those are tampons! <laughs> oh, okay, next confession. I had sex with my ex and then my girlfriend five hours apart. Stocked her calendar and she had a hookup five hours after me too. I have questions. So did you and your girlfriend both cheat on each other at the same time? I'm confused. <laughs> Next queer confession. When I was 14, my best friend and I had a crush on the same girl. We asked her if she would be open to playing spin the bottle with us, just the three of us. I admit that was awkward. One night we all had a sleepover on her deck in a tent and the three of us played spin the bottle. It was the first time I had ever kissed a girl and I developed a crush on my best friend after that. Oh, well, interesting turn of events. A few weeks went by and I told them that I liked them both, but then a few days later, my best friend told me that she and the other girl were, was, were dating. Oh, that's so sad. I was heartbroken and jealous, but now we're all good. Oh, I'm glad you're good now, but that is so fucking sad. I feel like it just needs to be a best friend code that like, if you like the same person, don't date them because it'll hurt your friend, you know what I mean? Like that happened to me in elementary school. Me and my best friend both liked the same guy and we both knew how much we both liked him. And one day he asked my friend out, she said yes and then they started dating and that was 
that was the early onset of my depression. That what that triggered my depression that year. So thank you for that. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, I just feel like people shouldn't do that to you. And I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> Next confession. I used to have dreams a lot about making out with my friends that were girls. I can relate to that. But this one specific time when I was in fourth grade, I had a dream about having a threesome with my teacher and his wife. If that's not a sign I was queer, I don't know what is. Damn, that, whoa. You know, dreams reveal our deepest desires. Did you know that? Oh, this is the most pure. It's not really a confession, but this is so fucking pure. My friend kissed me last night at homecoming. <laughs> I'm 15 and non-binary and she's also 15 and we tried dating last year, but I was scared because of COVID. But now we're both vaccinated. And five minutes ago, I called her and asked her if she wanted to be my girlfriend and she said, sure. And last night it was my first kiss and I want to do it again. Oh, that's so cute. Congratulations. I wish only the best for you guys. That is adorable. Next confession. Before I came out as gender fluid, I used to steal my sister's clothes while I was home alone and pose and take photos in her full length mirror because it made me feel pretty and euphoric looking feminine. She still doesn't know to this day. Oh, I love that. That is so cute. Aww. I think I do the same thing, but with like my partner's clothes because they wear more quote unquote masculine clothes. And whenever like I'm having a mask day or like I just don't feel like a woman, I'll wear Lauren's clothes and it makes me feel so much better. And I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. Whoa, okay. I was at a party at a friend's house. We were drunk and I ended up having sex with a girl in friend number one's bed. Friend number one was okay with that. After we left, some other friends came over, including a girl who bullied me for not being femme as a child and being a dyke, even though I didn't know yet. Turns out they were joking about us doing it on friend number one's bed and my bully went out and fully smelled the dirty sheets. Not like in a joking way, but a pervy, not cool way. FYI, she is the biggest stud I know now, LMAO. That is so fucking creepy. <laughs> okay, so the bully liked you because you, they were like, oh, you're definitely queer too. I'm queer, you're queer. And they bullied you because they liked you, but then they went and smelt your sex sheets. Don't, do not ever do this. If you're watching, if you're watching this video right now, please do not ever do that. That's so weird. Oh God. Next confession. I came out as a lesbian in high school three years ago and my one and only boyfriend has been a best friend ever since. Oh, wait, I love that. This summer I started working with my ex-boyfriend's bisexual girlfriend of two years and we got on really well. So well, in fact, that the three of us are now exploring a polyamorous relationship. An added layer of humor is that my friendship group chat, my ex and two other friends, has been called Who Wants a Threesome for the past four years? Wait, I love that for you. That sounds like a really great situation that if I was polyamorous, I would want to be in. So congratulations. Ooh, gee, okay, shit. Okay, next. I just came out and went to my first pride last Sunday and had never kissed girls and I kissed nine girls and have six hickeys like ducks in a row on my neck. <laughs> Which pride have you been going to? Because I feel like every pride that I was single, like I could not find queer people to talk to me. Maybe it was just too like introverted. You know what I wish they had? Well, I guess they can't really have it now, but like pride queer after party things where queer people can just go and mingle and like have a mixer and meet people and then like go off and do it whatever they want afterwards. That sounds so much fun. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, I hope you guys are all vaccinated. <laughs> This is, this is incredible. Next confession. When I was younger, like 11 or 12, before I realized I was a lesbian, I would play spin the bottle slash truth or dare with my friends who were girls. All the other girls would laugh and joke around or be grossed out about kissing girls, but I was living. I loved every second of it because I got to kiss a bunch of pretty girls. Oh, no. Way to uh, cheat the system so that it's in your favor, honey. <laughs> Next. <coughs> 
Next confession. I was going down on my girlfriend at the time and got a pube in my mouth and I choked on it. Oh no. <laughs> ah! I get, you just have to like, you know, if you get a hair in your mouth when you're going down on someone, like, you just gotta like low key, like. And then just move on, you know? Or you can like laugh about it. I feel like if you can laugh about it with your whoever you're having sex with, then that is the most ideal situation. Um, but I feel like you don't need to be embarrassed about that because that shit happens. And um, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Next confession. I was at a funeral, but I wasn't close to the guy who passed away. So I was there to show support to the family. So I went to talk to their best friend, a cute girl, and I intended to show her my respect by saying something like, I'm sorry for your loss, but she was wearing a green dress and all I could say was, wow, you look so beautiful. Oh, fuck. So basically I had a huge gay panic because I hadn't come out yet and a funeral was not the right place to start questioning my sexuality. I felt the pain when I read that. I felt your pain. I never know what to say at funerals, like, <sighs> That is definitely not the right place to uh, to have a gay panic. I'm sorry that that happened. <laughs> okay, this one's just for my Lost and Found fans. I'm a guy, and when I watched Lost and Found, I wanted to kiss Luke, James, Theo, and John. They were all so hot. Okay, yes they were. I feel like they casted like the hottest people in that show. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Honestly, I had a crush on all of them too. <laughs> no, like I actually had a crush on them. Um, the actor that played um, John for a while. Oh my God. Okay. I went to summer camp for a month this year and held hands stargazing with a really pretty girl and definitely had a massive crush on her. But then after camp, we found out her great uncle married my first cousin twice removed, making her my third cousin-in-law. Fuck. Damn it. Y'all, y'all must live in small towns because that shit would never happen where I live. <laughs> Okay, I am feeling hot after reading all those confessions. <sighs> anyway, that was very enjoyable. Thank you so much for sending in all of your confessions. I really appreciate you trusting me with your information and all of your secret secrets. Mwah, here's a hug. Oh, my back just cracked while I was hugging you. <gasps> you just cracked my back. <laughs> I love you, I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.